Tori Lovello is headed to the NLCS as we welcome you back inside with Yonder Alonzo, Jake Peavy, Matt Vaskersian, and Jake spent a couple of years uh, in a clubhouse with Tori and shared with us earlier that he was not surprised at all at his guy leading the way to a win. I, I wasn't, Matt. And after the game, that interview in the high five line, it got to me. And it, it just shows you what the postseasons are about, bottling up that energy. And you heard Tori Lovello talk about the love. Watch this right here. Grown men don't touch each other on the face like this and <laughs> hug. Hey, what? You know what I mean? What are you? Not, Come on, not man. Very, not very often. You have to love each other and, and, and build off that. You have to have relationships, and Tory certainly has that. I know this. In 2013, I was with a Boston team. We won the World Series, but things weren't always smooth. Yeah. I'll tell you what was smooth, having a relationship with Tory. Tory was a communicator. He was trustworthy. Anyone could talk to him. He was used as a rudder for this 13 team, and a huge reason of why we came together, dropped our egos at the door, and punched the ticket. I'm watching the same things take place I'm seeing the love in the room you're hearing him talk about it the first thing he said was I tell you what yonder there's a lot of love in this room there's appreciation for each other there's no egos the Arizona Diamondbacks have bottled up the energy you can throw analytics out the door at this point Woo! in time more love less ex woba he, he, he knows <laughs> the analytics though but he still feels within right the heart the soul yeah, the spirit call. like you, you look at the trainers he he gave those hugs to the players the same way he did it to the trainers, the same he yeah. did it to the ground crew. So you can tell the love, but man, what a job he did. What a job he did all year. That's right. right. I mean, yeah. what a job he did all year. And you know, you, you rarely say this about a, a manager whose team gets swept in a postseason series, but I know you feel strongly yeah. about the job Dave Roberts did Look, as well. I, I think he, he's, he's, he's going to get a lot of negativity for what happened, right? But you, you have a roster, you have a team that you really didn't think was going to win a division, let alone. And you come into this into this postseason, and I thought he managed, out of all the postseasons that I've seen from Dave Roberts, I thought he managed the best that I've seen in a postseason with Dave. I mean, you talk about a, a, a first inning in game one that it's, it's basically over, 9 nothing. You use five relief pitchers. Then in game two, you get a guy that only goes a, an inning and two-thirds. You have to use eight innings out of that, and you keep the ball game at a, at a reach, right? A 4 nothing reach when it, it could have easily gone, you know, 6 nothing, 8 nothing. Then in game three, you're looking at Lance Lynn, and you're hoping. Remember, all this stuff happens with one out, two outs. You're hoping he gets out of it. Four solo homers. You always say in the postseason, solo homers aren't going to beat you. But somehow you were able to manage that game to give yourself a chance. That's all you want to do. You want to give yourself a chance. You want to give your players to give yourself a, an opportunity to hopefully tie it or go on, on the road and, and, and lead that. That team it just didn't happen Mookie Betts Freddie Freeman one for 23 yeah yeah that's the issue there yeah, he yeah. did everything possible to get his team in the right path with runners in scoring position the big boys just didn't come through guys Shock that's what happened. that was the most shocking element of this to me yeah the result was shocking Dodgers were heavy favorites but if you told any of us that Betts and Freeman would go combined one for in three no chance. games, we'd say no way. And, and, and just to Yonder's point, they were close enough in those games that if those guys did strike, we're talking about different yeah. games. Last night, if one of them has a big hit, we're talking about a two-run game. The Dodgers are not in the position they are. This year, we expected hardly, if anything, from the Dodgers of what we had seen in the past. Injury throughout the season, starting yep. staff, yep. position player-wise, right. starting with Lux. Dave Roberts has been the class Man. Of, of, of all class in leading the Dodgers year after year. They just hadn't figured out that postseason mojo yet. They'll get there. There's nothing wrong with the I, way I, Dave I Roberts manages him. baseball. I, I talked to him, and look, look, the stuff he's done, I mean, with the Dodgers, it, it feels like 11 years, 11 playoff Those guys would right? die for Dave Roberts. Yeah, man, this dude, when it's all said and done, he's going to be one of the great ones that L.A. has ever had. And I think the negativity that's being put on him right now, you know, I know getting swept is hard, but, man, this guy gave every opportunity for his team to, to come out on top and win at least one game and move forward. It just didn't happen. It's the Diamondbacks moving forward at the end of the day. I'm going to throw this out there. Okay. He might have a couple World Series titles if it were not for some controversy. 100%. And if he has a couple World Titles rings, are we talking about what kind of manager he is in the postseason? He has one. I know it's a 2020, but one got taken from him when another team kind of knew what was coming. If that plays out differently and the Dodgers are world title, yeah, he's got two. And then the next yeah, man. year, he, he had his hands tied uh, against exactly the Red right. Sox. I, got a, I like Dave, moves. man. Dave's, Dave's one of us. We're all, we're all with